One of the reasons that we're the dominant species on the planet is our ability to innovate, to take ideas and turn them into actual tangible things that improve our daily lives. There are businesses, inventions, services, new technologies that come out every year that aim to innovate based on a new or developing field. But for every great innovation that changes the course of history for our civilization, there are about a hundred bad innovations that do the opposite, take us further back. A common theme if you've ever taken any business class or entrepreneurship class is people trying to reinvent things that don't need to be reinvented. People trying to reinvent the pen, people trying to reinvent the broom, people trying to reinvent socks. Simple things that really don't need reinventing. They work great as they do now and they do not need changes. But there is always somebody who's going to over-engineer something to death in order to make a profit. And today I bring you one of these things that honestly shouldn't have even left the idea table. Now normally when it comes to businesses that have failed in the past, I don't like talking about them in a negative light because it takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of risk, it takes a lot of effort to start a business and quite frankly if your business fails it can be a sad time. Unless you've stupidly over engineered something that should have never really been made in the first place and got hundreds of millions of dollars to do so and then failed. And that's the case today. Today we're going to be talking about the Laundroid robot, the 16,000 US dollar robot that was set to revolutionize the way that we fold our clothes and completely replace the way laundry was folded in our homes. It's funny there. I said I said sixteen thousand dollars like it would like it was a just you know pocket change. So I'll say it again for emphasis: sixteen thousand dollars. Okay, so this is a video that The Verge posted back in January of 2018. So it's not like this is any new technology. We already know how the story of Laundroid ends. See if you can spot any red flags that might lead to its oncoming doom. So we just might have broken a $16,000 laundry folding robot uh, because I insisted on demoing it with a Verge t-shirt that I brought. She actually brought one of her own t-shirts for the Laundroid to fold and it broke the machine. Now I've already expressed in the past my dismay at over-engineering things that don't really need to be over-engineered because it's just a waste of time, money, effort, and resources. This is something that happens sometimes in innovation. And you know what? I'm willing to give the Laundroid robot the benefit of the doubt. So it actually works with a companion app that catalogs all of your clothing items for you. So when you first set it up, you can feed it all of your clothing items and it can even categorize it by household family member. It'll eventually even have Alexa integration because what doesn't have Alexa integration these days? And of course, because this is CES, Laundroid isn't the only. Okay, here's my second problem with devices and innovations that completely over engineer things beyond comprehension more than they need to. Most of the time, they're not even making it easier. Like, honestly, most of the time when a company is over engineering their product and what they should actually do. There are so many things that just make it needlessly complicated as opposed to just going and buying something else. For Juicero, it was the fact you always had to be connected on Wi-Fi. Why would your juicer have to be connected to your home Wi-Fi? Like I'd be a lot less mad if this wasn't a common thing, but for every one of these companies I see that is over engineering something, every single person starts with, okay, first thing you gotta do is read all 58 pages of the manual to understand how to get your device connected to the Wi-Fi. Like if you're paying $16,000 for a robot that is gonna fold your own laundry, why do you need to have a companion app? Why do you need to feed it all your clothes to start off with? Why do you need to do any of these things? If the device is costing a fifth of your household income, why do you need it to actually register all your family members? Why do you need it to connect to Alexa? I, I mean, I get it, the technology is there, but it's just flashy at this point. There's nothing about it that actually provides any substantial value. I'm. I'm getting really annoyed at how many companies are over-engineering things. ...laundry folding robot here. We saw one yesterday called Foldimate, which is about half the size and around $850. But you have to clip on the clothing individually and who has time for that? 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 Who has Okay, that's, that's more like it. Okay, a laundry robot that costs less than a thousand dollars it doesn't have all the ai scanning technology or you know all the computer vision required to actually fold your clothes and categorize your family and interact with alexa but hey it does its job it's faster it's smaller it, it, it doesn't cost sixteen thousand dollars it's only eight hundred fifty dollars you know that maybe could be something that i see actually working that is something that i could actually see myself having to make a technology that will handle all of them together not only handle them, but fold them in a reasonable quality. Okay. Speed, 
And don't forget the part of cost and size, of course. So you have a lot of uh, machines today that are industrialized, but they are room size. They cost tens of thousands of dollars, and usually they can fold only one item very well. Yeah. Doing you know what? I can see it. The machine will have to be larger. Oh. Oh, this one's black. It's 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 a black lot. It's a it's a black piece of clothing. It's a black piece of clothing. That's a dark piece of clothing. Hold on. Wait. 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 Hold on. 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 What did I say? What did I say? What did I say? I saw it. Fold a full machine load in under four minutes. For reference, the Laundroid, which was 16,000 US dollars, could fold an entire load overnight. No, like it took the whole night to, to fold it. You'd go to bed and it'd be done in the morning. Four minutes. Yeah, you know what? I, I can see it. I can see it. You see, this makes a lot more sense than something like the Laundroid, you know, relatively inexpensive. You know, if you pay a couple thousand dollars for a, a washing machine or a couple thousand dollars for a dryer, What's, you know, 850 bucks for a laundry folder? You know, it has maybe a minimal effect in your life. I mean, you could fold those clothes naturally, but you know, say if you're rich and money isn't really an issue for you and you know, you can create dollar bills out of thin air, genie style. You know what? I can see it being useful. I, I could see a situation where if you've got like seven kids and you have just too many clothes to fold, every kid has their own dresser, every kid has like 30 pieces of clothing. I mean, it could be a situation where you might need one of these. And this must have been CES. I think that's the same guy from the video. And look at that. Boom. Sucks in the shirt right away. Well, hey, I mean, the Laundroid may have been a $16,000 colossal failure. But I mean, hey, Foldamate is uh, under a grand. It's smaller. It folds it faster. And it really just seems like the better alternative to Laundroid. So, you know what? I'm curious. Let's go check out the Foldamate website and see how they're doing. Okay, so as it turns out, Foldamate was a California-based company developing a robotic laundry folding machine robot. We all know this. It was founded in 2012. It was supposed to enter the market by end of 2019, and in 2021, it uh, folded. I really hope that we can all take something away from today's video, and that is we don't need to over-engineer everything. We do not need to over We do not need to over-engineer everything. The pen is great and has been great for the last thousand years because it's a pen. Actually, when was the pen? Okay, so the pen was invented by the Chinese between 1000 BC and 1 BC. And uh, so obviously the pen's been around a long time. We don't need innovating. We don't need an, uh, an AI pen that can digitally talk to you and tell you about how to improve your writing skills. That's what we have Grammarly for. I think somebody is going to see this video and this is going to inspire them to completely reinvent and over-engineer the pen. Eh, probably not.